Gordon's Garage. We're gonna start another video here. And in this video, we want to take this thing for a ride. To do so, we've got about a couple things to do. Anyways, brakes have gotta be done and there's another thing, it's time sensitive, I gotta do first, I guess. I'll have to do it, but I'm gonna do it anyways. Um, but yeah, I'm going to uh, go ahead and uh, let's see if we can get this thing back onto this lift table right here. And uh, I feel like I need to pull the front wheel off in order to put the fender on because it's just tough to get it in there. Um, and two, I need to uh, get the brakes on and stuff and I need to see if the threads are clean on the forks where the bolts go in. I think I need to tap those out. Anyways, that's got to get on here and I got to figure out how I'm going to lift the front of the wheel, front wheel off the, the table and uh, get it to where I can pull the front wheel off. So here we go. Now I'm going to record myself pushing this thing on here. This might be a mistake because I'm probably going to drop this bike. Here we go. Okay, that's not where I want to strap it. I've got to figure out where to strap it now to where I can lift the front end off the bike off the lift table. Yeah. Um, I think I need to take the seat off and strap through here somewhere. I don't know. And around to here uh, to that little loop thing. Um, let me get this thing up in the air and see uh, where, where I can get the seat off. Let's do, let's do that. Okay, the first thing I need to do is set up this battery. I picked me up another battery from Wally World there and uh, in stock this is the only one that they have that's close to being the right size for this Harley and uh, it's a little smaller but I'm hoping it'll hold a little better than that little battery I have in the Harley now. Other than it just the size that's the only, only thing I'm worried about. So I'm sitting here and I heard something take off. I was trying to pump this thing up. I heard something take off and it, it didn't make a sound taking off. I just heard something hit the sheet metal. And pew, something just off that sheet metal ricocheted and I heard it hit the floor or something. And I was like, what, what was I doing pumping my foot here, making this table come up? It caused something to go shooting. I, so I was like, okay, well, I'll figure it out here in a minute. It doesn't matter. And then I messed around and I decided to go double check this battery that I just put on the charger. And one of these red things, I've now put them all over here on top of this battery. The little plugs that go in the little holes across the top, one of them was missing. It had shot out, went straight up, hit the ceiling is what I heard. And it bounced and landed up here on the table. So, I guess when charging these things, those things can go projectile on me. Now I know, live and learn, right? Live and learn. Okay, now that I got those out and I'm not um, in danger of a, a flying projectile from the battery, I can get back to work on stabilizing this without uh, having it strapped in the front. Let's see what I can do here. Uh, strap. I'll be honest with you, I don't think that's gonna work. That's not gonna be stable at all. All right, get you in here. Yeah, yeah, that is around there, and it goes down to there, yeah.
Now, I'm saying it's not stable. Why do you think it's not stable? Because of the angle from here to here is almost straight up and down. I can't keep something from tipping if it's straight up and down. It needs to be out. He's way out here. So how am I going to do this? I'm going to try to crisscross them. Let's see what happens. I'll be honest with you, I don't think it's going to work as well as good either. So, um, I think what I'm going to have to do is just live with that beast being unstable. Uh, just short of welding or building something onto the table as a beam that can come out. You see, I mean, I have an idea. Let me see how much round stock I have. Just realized I wasn't recording anything. All right, so I've successfully got the front wheel off just by about that much. Um, up off the ground anyways. Um, so I've got that, that. I want to keep all the parts together, make sure I keep them in order. This goes on here. Um, speed on things fine. And this goes on here. All right, set this to the side. All right, this wheel should come forward. That should come out. So nice. Okay, up and out. Let's go. All right, I have realized that if I get the front fender on here, I can't up and out this thing. I'm going to have to really widen this out a lot. Next on the agenda is uh, I need to get these brakes cleaned up and bolted back up here so that I know where they go. Um, and I'm not even sure where I know where they go. So one thing I did that's uh, pretty cool and organized is the fact that I put all of my fine thread bolts in one of these dishes. So I'm not trying to figure out which one's fine, which one's fine. I don't even have the bolt for this. So when I got this basket case of a bike, that's another item that um, is missing. Bolts for first. You gotta source that. I need to figure out how long they are. So I've got the brake over here done. It's a back together thing, but it took me a while to really resource and figure out what threads I had, what's going on, and I'll disclose the right, or all the secrets right now. Um, so I'm gonna take this thing out. It should come out, or maybe not. Let me, uh, yeah. I might have to take this part real quick and uh, I'll show you the parts to this brake caliper, which matches the same as the other side. And uh, I'll show you what bolts I had to have and what I did to rig this up. Here we go. Uh -huh. Okay, I am gonna put this over here out of my way so you can see what we got here. Uh, dusty, dirty um, thing, this comes out. Let me see if I can pull this out of here. All right, and this is just a little sleeve that goes into this hole. Um, yeah, so there's this mechanism, it goes up inside here and it holds one of the brake pads. And there are two bolts that hold this to the forks and this is the two bolts right here. Ba -ba. Now I had to modify because I went to find a shoulder bolt, um, also being called an axle bolt. And that's a bolt that has an extra large shank or shaft between the head and the threads. And this is, uh, yeah. So this bottom one has got an extra large hole that regular bolt is going to just be real loose in. And so I'm going to have to have a spacer in there. And that spacer fits that and keeps it from going side to side. Um, so... Yeah. Um, can I remember what these are? 3 8 by 24 threads is the bottom one that needs the shoulder bolt or axle bolt. And this is the 16, 3 8 by 16, coarse thread, fine thread. The fine thread goes on this lower one and it threads into the bottom of this bracket. And the coarse one goes into this upper sleeve here and it allows the caliper to slide across it. All right, so I got them two bolts sourced. I even bought new bolts for my fenders to be held on with. 
and I have a set of new breaker, uh, new uh, brake pads because I'm missing one brake pad. This basket case is missing brake pads as long, uh, along with the uh, shoulder bolt uh, mounting bolts for your calipers. I'm going to take this caliper off. Um, that's um, one of these weird things that got here. Uh, this thing. I'm going to take this caliper off so I can hold it in my hand and clean it. And I'm going to get it all cleaned up and I'm going to bolt it to this fork. I was so close. So the brake calipers are, uh, are narrower than the actual tire and rim. So you have to take brake calipers back off, get this in there, stab it, and then you put the brake calipers on at a second. Okay, um, that'll stay. Let me just go ahead and pull those off. While I was at the hardware store, I had to pick up a few other things. Um, so I picked up this hardware here. This is going to be the bolts and washers for my windshield. That's an easy put on. This is hardware for the passenger seat. Don't need that right yet. Um, that's hardware I got for the saddlebags, the little clip-ins. I got these. Uh, this is just fastener kit for a license plate. And it has the locking nuts and screws in there. So I was like, that would be perfect. Um, so I picked up several different types of uh, rivets, uh, real short, real medium size, and then I got this kit that's got all the different kinds, because you know I was going to get all the way out here and not know what I was doing. I'm going to go ahead right now and replace the bolts in the windshield, and I'm going to go ahead and put the license plate on. Let's do that. So I'd get you in here for a better look at the battery. Uh, so it's all the way to that side. Forward and backwards, it's okay. Um, got a gap here. And whenever I strap this up, you put this one up here on the top, 
and then you put this one on the bottom. I haven't even stretched it out and <laughs> it's not even, so yeah, the battery needs to be much taller um, for this to hold and stay put. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Let's take that out of there and pull that battery out and put the other one in. So that's the best Walmart could do. Now, um, you can see back there, there's a little lip that comes up on the back side. It fills the gap back here. And there's a little pad right here. And on the front side, I had to cut that off in order to get the battery to fit. It's just just an eighth of an inch too thick. Um, but it, it fits in the metal bracket. Now, most of your um, cars have metal trays with no rubber lining. But since these vibrate so much, this might cause an issue later down the line. But this strap is tight and this battery shakes the whole bike so that means it's sitting good now i could scoot this whole thing uh back a little fill up this gap and leave a gap up there yeah, one half dozen the other um actually i might try that if it's not stopping anything just slide it back just like that but uh okay it gives me a little bit more room for cables and stuff that's good i've got my uh drain hose for the battery it goes from right here down around in and there's a little holder for it right way back up in there um yeah now you star wars nerds out there could decipher that and tell everybody what that means and if you're one of those explain yourself in the comments but i'll tell you right now that says 205 w-e-y and underneath this right here is a T. You can't see it because of the screw. But T-A-X-E-X-E-M-P-T. -E -E tax exempt. Because Darth Vader would be tax exempt. Yeah, why would he pay for tags? I took my saddlebags, put them in a box, and threw a little rattle can to the inside of them because they were like this dirty white stuff. And I, yeah, so I wiped them out best I could, and then I threw a little black paint. Um, the plan is making some liners for those in the future, some kind of cloth liner. Um, and then last night I was got thinking about the seat thing and look how good that looks putting these two together. I mean, it really does look good. The one thing I really like about this seat, even though it doesn't fit up here and right through here very well, um, the thing I like about it the most is this part of the seat. It's always nice to have something keeping you from sliding back. I mean, it just registers you in a spot. It's, it, there's something good about it. Now, this little seat here, it doesn't have that. It's a big banana seat. Uh, and I was like, I can't. I can't pull this off and put that on. And I was like, why was I going to do that? So I wanted to recheck and put this back on here and see what it looked like. There's two things. The front didn't fit quite right. It can. It looks good-ish. I wish it was different here, but it's okay. It's not horrible. And right here is an indentation for this bar. It's a little far forward for this model of bike. So that's another difference. Um, so I'm thinking to myself, what's less work and the least risk? If I take this cover off this and put it on that seat, I could really, you know, get into some pickle here. Um, but modifying this bike to hold this seat, it's not that much work. Um, the only difference is I'm, I'm still gonna have to drill different holes for the back and the front is gonna be, um, let me move this and show you. Move that back. So in the front, this little tange thing right here is what the seat holds on to but right about here is where the hole is on the bottom of this seat. Yeah, so that hole is further back. I'm like, okay, well, I mean, I can work on something. I can put, I can take these three bolts out and bolt in a, another one of these further back. I think I could do that. Um, then the only problem I have is this thing showing the bottom of this the seat's supposed to come up to there 
So plan B on that. I don't know. Um, I can make a piece to cover this, these four bolts, and it could stretch out and come further over and end at the seat. Once I get the seat to the final resting place, I would be making that. So all I really need to do today is make another one of these further back for that seat. And this is where the two holes would be for this, this new seat. And then I'd have to drill a hole in the back for this one because this is going to sit right there. And then I need a bolt in here. That's all I have to do. Okay, I've got me a bracket made and it is hooked up on there and that's how tight it sits. It looks like the tank should be this thick instead of this thick, um, but it is what it is. Um, it looks good and my holes back here still line up. Yeah, so I can still do those two holes and that will hold that seat in there real nice and tight. And now I've just gotta do these holes back here and this here. So let me pull this back off here and show you. That's the bracket I added. Needs some paint, but I just took off one bolt and just shoved that under there. Um, I think I'm gonna take a hammer and pound that downward just because I don't know why else. With bleeding brakes, I thought I'd ask y'all in the comments down below if y'all have a link to a video or anything that's um, a handy way of uh, bleeding brakes when you got dual calipers on the front. Um, so I don't know, I'm just trying stuff. <laughs> so I've got the reservoir open, I've got uh, brake fluid in it, and I'm monitoring to make sure it doesn't go down too far. And I'm just pumping the lever slowly. And when I do, I'm looking down here at that tube and I can see the fluids way up in here um, actually it might not be it might be right down here but um, I've been doing this and bubbles would be coming out and so I came over here and I've put a uh, put a tube on this side as well I hope you all can see that and I got a little bubble traveling up through there and as I squeeze the handle um, that's a wrong handle um, as I squeeze the handle I've been getting bubbles out of there and now the bubbles have stopped I'm very micro bubbles in there but once these bubbles have stopped and this fluids getting way up to here on this it's getting closer to the reservoir <laughs> so I'm thinking I'm getting close and I might tighten down the um, bleeder um, screws on top of the calipers and see what I've got I gotta look back in here. We're getting kind of low again. Not too bad. It just seems like I didn't put much fluid in it. I don't know. <laughs> so tightening those things down and then we're gonna find out just uh, how well these brakes work. Okay, I believe I've got the ble uh, brakes bled, but I have a problem. The brake caliper is pressing on one side of the uh, disc but not closing the backside. So these bolts that I made up, this one's fine, but this one, 
I think needs to be able to sink down inside of this hole. And the proof is whenever I let this off, is that right? All right. All right, so I've let it off that far. Maybe I'll do it like that. And now I'm gonna go squeeze the brake lever. One, two, three, four, five. Right there. Now I've got a good brake lever. It's good and strong. And what was happening was instead of letting the two come together and letting this float like it's supposed to, I had it tied down tight. So I can't have this washered. It needs to sink inside that hole. So this shoulder bolt needs to only be that big around. I got to figure out how to redo that to where that sits and slides inside, but still holds that bottom side from falling in and out. Um, yeah, let me see what I can conjure up. Okay, so I did the other side already and this is what it looked like before, except it had a washer in between the spacer here. So I basically have to take the corners off of that and turn it into a standard, fill, a standard screwdriver head. So I gotta go grind that off. Let's go. Hmm. There we go. Ground all the corners off and cut a slice in it so the screwdriver fits. Now I just need to uh, put some Loctite on it. Just like that. And get it in there. It's still a little warm. I like this because it holds on to a great big screwdriver real well. Alright. Check the brakes. Oh yeah, good brakes. Okay, I have one last thing. Before I ride this bike, I need to uh, get some gear on and uh, I cannot forget the gremlin bell. Gotta have that on there. Whew, all right, this is it. The moment I've been trying to get to all of this time and uh, that is dirt right there. Yeah, um, it needs a good wash job, but that's okay. Um, I'm just going around it one time here, showing y'all the finished product before I take her out on the road. And it takes a rock chip or something. I don't know. Gremlin Bell, save me. Save me, Gr Gremlin Bell. Yeah, okay. We're going to turn on the gas, pull the uh, choke in, and uh, let's take this down the road. Let's see what happens.
finally got to go for a ride. Um, successful. We went out, we didn't break down on the road. We didn't have catastrophe with something, you know, coming out undone on me. So far, everything's staying together. I've locked out a lot of stuff. <laughs> Nevertheless, there's two things I've got to address before I can take this to the house and use it as a daily or something like that. Number one, I think it's the carburation. It's a bit, it, it pops and sputters in mid throttle. Low throttle can kind of idle, it's okay. Whenever I go to give it some throttle, it don't like it, it spits and sputters. If I just lay on the throttle heavy, it loves all that air and it loves all the, the gases coming and it just, it just takes off, just boom, accelerates down the road. I was thinking it was some kind of timing or something's going on, but I think we actually just have a um, carburation issue. Some jets, we need to change some jets, I think. And maybe idle air screw, I don't know. It needs to idle down a little bit, it's a little too fast still. The other thing we have, front forks, bit springy. I might need to add some fluid to those. I don't know why they're so springy. They're so soft and springy. Anyways, um, I need to work on those two things, and this sucker will be out and running around all over town. You might see me, just give me a peace sign and say, yay, or whatever. Till then, y'all have a good weekend.